marriage is an insurance policy for a woman's decreasing SMV, sexual market value, to coincide with a man's increasing SMV, sexual market value. A lot of people will look at the ideal of marriage as some sort of Adam and Eve thing where two people, nobody else in the world, the beginning before the fall, no conflict, there was peace, everything was perfect, made sense, and it's going to be happily ever after. Or they look at it that way in kind of like the religious context or a secular context in a basic 1950s man goes to work and comes home the wife has been taking care of the house and there's dinner waiting for him after a hard day days of work and they just have the family that sits around the table and eats together and again lives happily ever after that's people's ideal in their head of how they think it's gonna go for their own marriage or as they get older but a lot of these aspects that a lot of people don't think about, especially in modern society, because things change too, not just our society in the United States, but any society you're born in, that's gonna influence how you look at a lot of things. So the society you're born in, the culture, the religion, the government, the media, the influences, your peers, that all is gonna affect your view on relationships and on marriage. And when it comes to the way things are now in the United States, and just going naturally for who we are as people, regardless of the country, just who we've always been as living creatures. The man with testosterone, the woman with estrogen, and how that plays off each other. So you have this increasing population, exponential population growth. You have technology that gets rid of a bunch of jobs. So you have a, a lot more people competing for a lot less opportunity for jobs. Even the, the definition of a job, the definition of putting food on the table and just the way things are and the competition and just the population increase and certain influences like I mentioned with the example of the 1950s couple then you go to the 60s and now that's the counterculture and the sexual revolution and feminism and divorce laws changing and marriage laws changing and there's a lot of stuff going on with that and so now you look at this modern society you have the social media you have the feminism you have the way the laws are, you have the pushing people to go to college and do the career thing and party and do whatever you want and then look for the relationship. So it's different between trying to do that at 18 versus, okay, I'm 30 now, so now I'm ready to settle down or whatever. So it's gonna be different. And the way that men and women view each other naturally anyways, in terms of what's most ideal to the average person, it's going to be the man being more of the leader, more of the alpha, holding it down, being the breadwinner, having the burden of performance, whereas the woman has the fertility for the kid. Because even if a couple decides that they don't want to have children, those dynamics are still there because we're living creatures. The reason that we're here and breathing and have blood going through our veins is because a man and a woman had a kid, which was us, and that's why we're here existing today. So even if you decide consciously to not have one, those dynamics are in play. How's it going? Rings here, sterling silver for 14, and bracelets for 12. Good friend. So those dynamics there are still in play, and so it's gonna come into play with how you're gonna be perceived there by the opposite sex. So a guy, in terms of having to acquire the resources, in terms of having the burden of performance, it's gonna take longer in an economy where we have to work up. So the guy at 18, coming out of high school or 22 coming out of college he's going to increase his SMV with time so he'll go from living with parents and being kind of immature mentally spiritually physically emotionally to increasing that maturity over time so he's going to go be a different more evolved higher SMV man from 18 to 30 whereas the woman in order to have the kid the fertility the youth the healthy young fertility that has the highest chance of a healthy offspring it's going to have the opposite trajectory of 18 to 30 so the guy 18 to 30 and the girl 18 to 30 is going to be a different trajectory of how that's going to play out so the way marriage is going to go is it's really just an insurance policy for a woman's declining smv to cash in on the man's increasing smv because women at the end of the day too they're all going to want the, the top level guy, the top dog. 
because that's just how hypergamy is. Because there, it's in the best interest of a future child to have good genetics, good-looking features, healthy features, healthy bones, healthy skin, healthy genetics, healthy hair, healthy face, n not getting sick, being tough, being strong, being mobile, being athletic. That's going to help for survival. So it's in the child's best interest to have those good genes. It's also in the child's best interest to have a stable environment with resources and water and food and money and shelter and luxuries and comfort. So two basic ways to summarize that, money and looks, it's just in the child's best interest for the woman to mate with a man that has the highest potential money and looks. But this is the problem is that women bear the kid for nine months and then breastfeed the kid and take care of the kid and nurture the kid afterwards so they have a different role to set up that's just set up biologically and spiritually from the get-go whereas men are going to be more of a uh, burden performance what do you provide what do you do who are you what's your level in society and because the man doesn't bear the kid the man has the physical potential to have multiple children in a shorter period of time than the woman does how's it going yeah, thanks. I'm doing some red pill YouTube videos. Yeah, thanks. I got uh, the bracelets here for 12, sterling silver rings for 14. So that's going to be a different role there for both of them. So it it's going to be more she's going to be more selective about it in terms of who she has to pick. So that's why you're going to see a bottleneck where you're going to see a bunch of women that are going to be more interested in the top level guys whereas they're going to have so it's, it's like that saying it's like the 90% of women go for the 10% of men so that's what you need to understand as a younger man you're coming out of high school you're coming out of college you're at the bottom of the barrel of the economy and what you provide and so you're you're going to have an increasing trajectory so as a man what you need to do is focus on yourself have a good one guys focus on yourself focus on what you're doing focus on your money focus on your health and focus on what you need to do to go up the ladder because when it comes to marriage it's not to say that the point of this is to never take care of a woman or to uh, live selfishly or to to just be irresponsible or just think life is just about your own pleasure or fun life's really what you make it if it's not hurting anybody then most people aren't going to care anyways but even though life isn't just about your own pursuits or your own desires don't let people twist those words and get you in a situation that's just bad so the whole oh a real man would get married a real man would do this for a woman a real man would, that that whole saying you got to think about it as think about it as a man she has every right at any point in time to reject you based off what money you have, your looks, your finances, your charisma, your personality, your level in the world, whatever it is she thinks you can do for her. She has every right to say yes or no to you. So just because you're increasing in the world and maybe you're 30 years old now as a man and you finally have a good job, finally have your own place, finally have your thoughts on the world together in a mature sense and now your value is increasing, you don't have to just become the insurance policy or the backup plan for someone that would have thought your career sucked a couple years prior. How are you? Hi. I got sterling silver rings here, $14 and bracelets for 12. Yeah, no problem. So yeah, that's just how it's going to be. For the most part, it's going to be an insurance policy for the trajectories of how the genders are going to go. So as a man, do what you're going to do in terms of your relationships, whether it's casual, whether it's serious. But when you do get that government contract, that does change a lot of things. So really think about it if that's something you want to do. Because you can have the same exact benefits in any relationship you want without the government or the priest saying that it's something more special now. And now if something goes wrong in the future or things start to get a little rocky, now you have this contract that some other third party mediator is going to come in and decide who gets what, who gets the house, who gets the kids, who gets the dog. So you got to really think about whether that's something that you want to do with the ever-changing dynamics of how this is going to go.